The goal of this series is to have a conversation, although it's kind of one way because I can't hear you, but have a conversation about the implications of the Second Amendment and uh, the right to keep and bear arms, including the second part of the phase uh, regarding a well-regulated militia. They are not separated. Uh, this isn't intended to be a rant, uh, but it is a well thought out, in my view, uh, set of views on the implications of this particular amendment. Now remember, we have several others, and none are more important than the others. Some apply more today than at other points in time, but we go in harm's way if we um, are not very thoughtful in talking about which amendments we would adjust and which amendments we wouldn't. Because there's that little third amendment thing, if you don't remember what that one is, and that's that the government can't force uh, you to take troops into your house, nor can they confiscate your, your, your property without due process. Uh, that's the third amendment. I don't know why too many people even think about that. But in this case, the Second Amendment uh, has a focus on a couple of areas. And I'll try to take a logical view of that. One, it says that we have a right to keep, means we can have them, and bear, means we can carry them, arms. Uh, arms or firearms or any other kind of arm or weapon. Uh, it, today we associate that with firearms or guns, as uh, some uh, think. Now, just because we have a right to do something doesn't mean we must. In other words, I don't go to my neighbors and say, you must Go get a gun and arm yourself because you, you have a right to do that. Therefore, you should. Uh, we, have, we have a right to vote and, and as good citizens, we should. But that could be said of, of, of a lot of the uh, uh, civil rule and civil law that we have. But with respect to the Second Amendment, what we're talking about is at the end of the day, we have a right to have on our person the ability to use deadly force in the guise of a firearm. Whether it's a long gun, whether it's a pistol, doesn't matter. And I think that's where uh, people get really uh, caught up in this. Uh, because we, we come face to face with the idea that we can kill another person in defense of ourselves or under imminent threat or of another person. That is common in every place in the world. Because a homicide is a homicide. It's either justified or it's not. So if you have a weapon or a firearm, it is intended to kill another person, not hunt, not Hunting was an ancillary. It was, it was something used to kill another person, as we were designed for. But it's the best equalizer among people, believe it or not. Uh, because at the end of the day, words aren't going to do it. Words won't do it. If you have a violent crime situation that you must protect yourself against, and you do that by using... Uh, deadly force in whatever manner. And the tool you have is a firearm because it is the best, most efficient tool to keep distance between yourself and a threat. It just is. Whether it's a pistol for shorter distances or a rifle for a little longer distances, it doesn't matter. It will protect you from a threat. So, if you are in the situation your choice is 
uh, in a case of a bear attack, for example, I'll use that, lay down and become food for the predator, or in the case of a human predator, to lay down and become the victim, in which case most of the time you're going to die or you're going to be hurt very badly. No one should be forced to accept that consequence without having the ability to protect themselves against it. And that's important. Because others have an aversion to using deadly force to protect themselves, doesn't mean that others should be denied that right, because it's distasteful to others. I mean, it's just that simple. Not everyone is capable of exercising the right under the Second Amendment. There are people who, as part of their makeup, are not capable of using that level of force to protect themselves or anyone else. Some would argue that, that every, and I would, that everyone has that point where they will. Um, many will deny that for religious reasons or philosophical reasons or whatever. Uh, and there are many who literally would not be capable of exercising that right, regardless of the tool that they have, whether it's a, a blade instrument, a firearm, uh, a club, you know, or strangling somebody to death. I mean, uh, taking another's life is not a trivial thing. And I'm not talking about sociopath. So given that there are those who are unable, they're just unable, uh, they still have the right. And you know, by the way, they have folks like me and others who are willing to protect them using the Second Amendment as well. There are some who struggle with another rationale for the Second Amendment, and that is for the people to be able to protect themselves from, from a tyrannical government. And whether we like it or not, uh, that happens. It happens around the world, and it is, it is possible and probable for that to happen here in this country. That's not conspiracy talk. Uh, there is a, a modern, modern meaning in the last hundred years, uh, example of that uh, here, it was in Alabama, and it was the 1946 uprising, where a group of, uh, and this is documented, a group of uh, returned war veterans from World War II uh, discovered massive graft and corruption in the sheriff, from the sheriff to the governor in their particular state. Uh, long story short, one of the guys decided we would run uh, for mayor. Uh, that was met by force from the sheriff who was corrupt. Uh, sheriff stole the ballot box, put it in the, in the sheriff's office. The returned veterans uh, went and literally got their guns and assaulted the uh, sheriff's office to protect the vote, to protect the ballot box. And uh, that was successful. Uh, criminal charges were filed and the good guys won. But that was done with force of arms. It was a rebellion, an armed rebellion of citizens against corruption who was going to take control of the vote. That's a modern example. Uh, can that happen again? Are there forces uh, in, the, in this country today that uh, could have that as a result? Certainly. Uh, would it necessarily come from the federal government? Who knows? Uh, and it doesn't, that's not a Democrat or Republican or Tea Party thing. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And when you spend almost a billion dollars to become elected, that's a lot of money, a lot of power, a lot of influence on both sides. So is it possible? Yes. Uh, are there geopolitical factors that could also make that uh, happen? Yes. Um, 
Should we be prepared? Yes. Uh, does that mean that there is a there is a current close in time frame probability of an armed insurrection against local government, state government, or federal government? Not that I can see. Uh, but it's better to have to have the ability and to have the law, the Constitution, give you the ability to protect yourself so that you cannot be disarmed. So that if it gets down to uh, protecting uh, our rights as citizens, and that's all citizens, not just a certain category, uh, then we should do that. It's exactly the same as protecting oneself from violent crime. So we have this capability, and it's protected under the Second Amendment, to keep and bear arms. The militia part is tends to be lost on a bunch of people, and they assume that militia means standing army, which is not the case. Uh, as a matter of fact, our founders really hated the notion of a standing army uh, because of the ability for those kinds of things to abuse the, the population, and that's been seen around the world. So when we talk about having the, the, the ability, the right and to have the ability to uh, take another's life in our defense, and a tool that is very efficient in doing that, which is a firearm, then it says, first of all, it creates a culture in America that does not exist anywhere else in the world, because no one has the Second Amendment but the United States of America. So, given that, um, you, you, you suck it up and say, this is America. We are a gun culture country. And the only way to change that, without infringing on the Second Amendment, is to change the Second Amendment. Good luck with that.